You know, I sometimes feel like our city goes as the Broncos go, <laughs> and right now, it feels good to be living in the city of Boise. It feels like everyone, at least on social media, it's their birthday this yeah, week. Right? They're yeah. celebrating. Oh, my, my goodness. <laughs> Welcome on into Sunday Sports Extra. Jay Tuss alongside Will Hall. You know, it's been almost a year since BYU rolled into the city of trees and beat the Broncos on the blue. If that outcome of the game wasn't motivating enough, the team photo the Cougars took after the game certainly pushed the Broncos over the top. Yeah, yesterday the guys dressed in blue and orange would seek out payback in Provo, but this is the picture. Boise State linebacker Zeke Noah acknowledging earlier this week that the players had not forgotten about it. And even running back Cyrus Habibi Lakio, who wasn't on the roster last year, said that this picture eh, pissed him off. The Broncos played like they were agitated yesterday. Boise State trying to rebound from their worst five game start to a season since 2001. And they were trying to get their biggest road win since, well, that same season, coincidentally. That was the last time the Broncos knocked off a top 10 opponent in a true road matchup, 2001. BYU got the sc scoring started early. Jaron Hall follows an opening drive field goal with this 14 yard touchdown pass to make it 10 0. And I'm not going to lie, early on, the Cougars had the environment in their favor. That place was rocking. Yeah, it certainly was. Fantastic grab right there from Samson Nakua to give the Cougars a 10 zip lead. Boise State will respond with a field goal, and then they get in the end zone here. Oregon transfer Cyrus Habibi Likio punches it in to tie things at 10. He had a career high 107 total yards in this game. On the ensuing kickoff, this then happens. It appears that running back Tyler Crow punches the ball out. The Broncos fall on it, and eventually JL Skinner emerges from the bottom of the pile. It kind of felt like Boise State grabbed a little bit of momentum right here. Making plays on special teams. That was a big turnover for the Broncos. And on the very next possession, they hand the Ball off to their battering ram, Andrew Van Buren. 18 carries yesterday for 60 yards. He punches it in right here for the touchdown. The Broncos scored 20 straight points to take a 20 to 10 advantage into the locker room at halftime. AVB again, yeah, finished with 60 yards rushing. Pretty good afternoon for him. On to the second half we go. Boise State now up 23-17 and attempting to put the game away. Khalil Shakir with an unbelievable grab as Hank Bachmeyer throws up a 50-50 ball, which when you aim that at Shaq, it's more like a 90-10 ball. <laughs> Jonah Dalmas boots his fourth field goal of the day through the uprights. That made it a nine-point game with about three minutes remaining. BYU trying to put together a late rally. By the way, I love that celebration, Jonah and Riley Smith. Jaron Hall going downfield, eyeing a target, trying to make a play out of desperation. Going to heave it up here. But the Broncos with their fourth turnover of the day. It's Koenoe Kaniho, younger brother of Keikala Kaniho, coming up with the interception to seal the deal. Boise State knocks off BYU on the road, 26-17, the final. It's a huge win. I mean, the, obviously the record's a big deal. Um, playing a, a team like this and, you know, being able to do what we did today on the road in their stadium. And they've got an unbelievable team and coaching staff and all that. But... This is just part of reestablishing the foundation, reestablishing what Boise State has always been about, and that's about hard work, diligence, and taking care of each other. And this just shows what happens if we if we can do that consistently and we can rebuild that into our foundation that what, what we're capable of. And it, it really is uh, something else. I can't really put it into words right now, but all the work that we put in this week, um, you know, we, we deserve this one as a team. And the work at this point is irrelevant because of the feeling that we feel right now. So... We, we're going to continue to keep our heads down. We're going to enjoy this one tonight. But, you know, the only way that we can go from here is up. Wow. Uh, what a performance by Boise State. Historic on so many uh, levels. Boise State also the first team in the Mountain West to go knock off a top 10 opponent in a non-conference game since 2005. A week ago, we were talking about all this history on the negative side yeah. Boise State was making recently. Now, back more to that positive stuff yeah. that we're much more accustomed to covering the Broncos. What a massive win for Andy Avalos and his entire program. And you mm -hmm. felt like talking with the players and Coach Avalos post-game, they credited the win yesterday with their week of prep. Yeah. They said it started with practice each day. Yeah, and now Andy Avalos, the lone person in school history with a top 10 victory on an, over an opponent on the road as both a player and a coach. I would honestly <laughs> love to know how many times that's happened really in, in the history of college know? football. I'd, 
I got no clue. I don't. You've I, been stoked. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have the power to look up those stats. Maybe yeah. we can get some help on that one. But I would assume very few people have a top ten victory at their alma mater as a head coach and as a player. Of course, Andy did it in 2001 yeah. when he was a linebacker on, on Boise State. They went down and knocked off Fresno State on October 19th. It's, it's almost an anniversary of that thing, almost 20 years ago. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But hey, one common thread with Boise State and their victories this season, their ability to force turnovers. <laughs> on that note, we turn it over to Tom Scott for tonight's edition of The Scott Slant. You are correct, sir. Uh, there were, <laughs> as we remember, there were no turnovers forced against Nevada last week, but that was an aberration. All three of those BYU fumbles yesterday were forced, and Kaonohi Kaneo's interception was the icing. What were we talking about going into the season? Turnovers after they were almost completely absent last year. Well, here are the numbers through six games of the past five years. 2017, 18, and 19, okay. Last season, not okay. And this year, very, very good. More than two and a half per game, and the four yesterday directly resulted in a signature victory. So here's important upward trend number two, the usage of the running backs. These are their numbers with everything else taken out. The season started slowly for them and hit bottom against Oklahoma State and at Utah State, where the wide receivers and Hank Bachmeyer saved the day. Things picked up versus uh, Nevada for the backs last week. And at BYU, even without George Halani, they gained 140 yards. The big number here is 38. By far the most running uh, the most running backs have been called upon this year. 38 carries, and that kept the ball away from the Cougars. Let's go to Scotland Trivia, and with Air Force coming to town, we have this nugget from games past. In three consecutive games against the Falcons from 2016 to 18, Boise State produced two 100-yard receivers each time versus Air Force. Which five players were involved in those box scores? Name as many as you can. We'll tell you who they are after the first break, and Jay and Will, it's back to you. 